Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Banjo-Tooie! Oh man, I'm excited to get into this. We beat World 1 last time, and we have some new moves. We've got the Briegel Blaster, which lets us go into first-person shooter sections. We have the Egg Aiming Sight, which allows us to shoot eggs in first person anywhere we want, and gives us this nice little aiming sight. And we also learned the ability to grab onto ledges. Now that we can grab onto ledges, there's a new place we can visit here in the Jinjo Village. We can go to this little beachside area. I guess just a sandy cove. And there's a ledge up here. Grab onto this. Get rid of some of these snapdragons along the way. Again, for these snapdragons, you don't really need that good reflexes. You just need to know when they were coming. Get a nice little music change, and... <laughs> that looks like a Banjo-Kazooie game pack! I wonder what's inside! So there's this little N64 cartridge here, if we do a rat attack rap or heck, if we just attack it. It's a little too fast, but we destroyed it, and look what it dropped! Yes, sir! It's the fabled Banjo-Kazooie Ice Key! I wonder what it opens! So you remember from my Banjo-Kazooie Let's Play, or if you've experienced Banjo-Kazooie yourself, there are those stop-and-swap items that we've collected. The original intent was for those items to be collected in Banjo-Kazooie, then for you to be able to swap to the Banjo-Tooie cartridge with those data that are still carried over in the N64 RAM, and you can use those for uh, special things in Banjo-Tooie. They didn't end up working out for a variety of reasons, so instead what they did to try to patch things up is that they included some of the stop and swap items that you get in Banjo-Kazooie in this game in the form of these N64 cartridges. You don't get all of them. You you don't. There are many of those stop and swap secrets secrets that you don't get. Uh, you get the ice key and you get free of the eggs, but a good portion of the eggs are just flat out not in it. And we also can't use the. <laughs> you did that on purpose. Sorry, Banjo. <laughs> uh, you can't use the ice key for a while, but we're gonna get it now because we can, and I don't want to forget about it later. And you don't need it to find any of these stop and swap items to beat the game. But, they lead to some cool secrets. The other thing that we're going to do is if we go to the Red Jinjo house, you can see that there was a treble cleft on the roof of it. Well, now that we've got the ability to grab onto ledges, you can do a high jump here, grab on, and get that nice little treble cleft. We now have 120 notes. Also, we've completed the White Jinjo family house, so I'm gonna pay the White Jinjo house a visit. Alright, so it's over here. Oh sweet, this is where I wanted to go anyways. Yeah, so if you follow the digger tracks, they lead from out of the tunnel where we enter the Jinjo village from, and they lead up to this cavern, which has collapsed. This is the way they got to the wooded hollow. Stupid booger bean, get out of here. They went this way, but we couldn't follow them, that's why we had to find the alternate way. Anyhow, let's go to the white Jinjo family house, because their, their family of one is completed. Oh, we get this celebratory music. <laughs> The White Jinjo is just an introvert. He likes being by himself. Oh, we can't even talk to him. He's just celebrating. Booyah. Nice one. Anyhow, now that we have the grip grab, we can actually go into the wooded hollow the way that's, like, intended for passerbys to go through. We don't have to take the shortcut through Bottle's house anymore. Now granted, we also could have just taken Jam Jars' silo as a shortcut, but we didn't have to. I wanted to show this off at least once. And here we are. So this is all that we've really been able to explore for this part of the ILO Hags, but now that we have the Grip Grab ability, which we learned from the Mayahem Temple, we're ready to go to the next part of the ILO Hags. So what the game wants you to do is you can jump up on these rocks and then shimmy along this edge. You don't have to do that, though. You can literally just do a high jump over here. If you do it at the right part. Boom. We can just climb up and avoid all of that, which is nice. Magic Globo creatures are usually found near Mumbo Jumbo and Humba Wumba. Yep, I explained that last time. Anyhow, 
Once again, the Digger Tunnel went a different way, but the, ca the cave it went through collapsed, so we have to go here. Welcome to the Isle of Hags Plateau. We are very high up now. We can walk up these planks of wood. And there's a sign for Glitter Gulch Mine. With some musical notes on top of it. I kind of want to do a grip grab to climb up there. Thank you. Just had to do it from this side. Lovely. And there's a jam jar silo here. Yeah, he actually has moves that we can unlock in the overworld. Let's see what he's going to teach us. Fire eggs. Now's the time for you to learn shooting eggs that crackle and burn. It's a new type of egg. A brand new egg you have acquired. Now I'll tell you how they're fired. Tap R2 to get your eggs on view. Tap it again until it's right for you. That'll be all. Dismissed. Yeah, so Banjo-Tooie introduces a bunch of new egg types. The first one that we learn are fire eggs. They sound pretty cool, but they're honestly, they're kind of limited in what they can do. But they are more powerful than regular eggs. So we can use those to defeat a lot of enemies, and they are needed for a couple of puzzles. So, nice of him to give it, um, them to us. We can explore more of this area, though. I really like how open-world and explorative these worlds are. Even the overworld. Well, we can't get through that door. These are Banjo and Kazooie switches, but I can't, apparently we can't press them, even though we are Banjo and Kazooie. Yeah, well, those will come into play later on. There's a giant beehive here. With some musical notes for us to collect. And if we go behind here... Look at that! It's a hollow honeycomb piece. We now have four of them. Alright, well, let's see what's inside this beehive, shall we? It's Honeybee's Hive. Hi there, Big Bear! I'm Honeybee, mistress of the honey. Ah, why couldn't you be mistress of the Jiggies instead? Because that would have made your quest too easy. However, I can grant you extra energy units in return for empty honeycombs. I suppose that's better than nothing. Don't be so rude, Kazooie! Oh, sorry, Wasp Lady. I'm Honeybee, a bee, not a wasp. Ah, uh, right you are, Hornet Girl. You have enough honeycombs for two more units of energy. Do you want to trade? <laughs> Do you want to trade? Yes. Sure, honey. Toss your honeycombs over here then, Big Bear. Here's your extra energy. Boom. So much like how in Banjo-Kazooie 1, the way you get extra uh, additional max HP is by getting a hollow honeycomb pieces. Whereas in the first game, collecting six just automatically gave you an extra one. Here, we actually have to take the pieces to Honeybee to get them. And there are three more potential health extensions we can get, but we'll have to collect five more Hollow Honeycombs before we can get the next one. <laughs> I kind of... In a way, I, it's kind of disheartening to see Banjo and Kazooie so snarky in this game compared to the first one, but also it kind of fits with the overall feel of the game, <laughs> and it leads to some funny moments. As well as the fact that, like, Banjo and Kazooie in this game are basically, like, only doing stuff for Jiggies, where it's like, can you help me out with my quest? It's like, ah, oh, will you give us a Jiggy? That would be nice. So this is the entrance to World 2 right here, but unfortunately... There's grates in the way, so we can't get through. This is Jiggy Wiggy's altar of knowledge. Press B to view the Mighty One's wisdom. Oh, did I not trigger this for the first world? Whoops. It is written that four Jiggies are required to open this door. You have enough Jiggies to attempt my challenge. Do you wish to warp to my sacred temple? Wait, we can do that? Okay, I'm not gonna do that now because I have to open up the new silo first. 
Okay, no, up here is just some feathers. Much like how the bundles of feathers in this will alternate between red and gold feathers, the bundles of eggs now will alternate between the different types of eggs you collect. Okay, first things first, we're gonna open up that silo, turn green, so now we can warp to the plateau whenever we want. Okay, I did not even realize you could just warp to Jiggy Wiggy's temple from here. You only need four Jiggies to open World 2? Wow. I mean, that's still more than the first game where you'll need two. Yes, please, I'll open your sacred temple. I guess free, technically. Hey, Jiggy Wiggy! Nice of you to give me your teleportation device. I really appreciate it. So we have 11 Jiggy... Uh, <laughs> Am I seriously stuck? Okay, good. <laughs> Alright, let's go up here and attempt Jiggy Wiggy challenge number two. Well, another easy puzzle. And again, this is a sneak peek at the second world. And easy enough puzzle. You have completed Jiggy Wiggy's challenge too, so now the Great One will show you the way. You can probably guess what World 2 is going to be, just based on what we've seen at the Plateau. Behold the power of the mighty Jiggy Wiggy! Blows open the grate leading underground. You are indeed the chosen one. You also have enough jiggies to attempt a challenge. Three. So, yeah, we only need eight jiggies, so we could open up world three, but I'm going to plan on doing only opening wor one world per every few episodes. We're only going to open the worlds as we need to go there. Thanks, Jiggy Wiggy. Appreciate it, bro. Cool teleportation device that you have. Love it. you also notice that the door doesn't close behind us again because we have the necessary Jiggies. You must collect enough Jiggies to prove yourself worthy to enter Jiggy Wiggy's temple. It seems you have collected enough Jiggies to be allowed inside. Remember, no cameras permitted and only food purchased at McJiggies can be eaten with it. Yeah, we know, but we're, we're more of a Five Guys family here. <laughs> unacceptable. <laughs> Bro, if you, if you think Five Guys is unacceptable, you clearly haven't eaten there. So we can warp to the Jinjo Village. We're going to the Plateau, though. It's time to enter World 2. We, we're already, like, almost 15 minutes into the episode. All right, time to enter world two, another favorite of mine. World two, welcome to Glitter Gulch Mine. World two is an underground mine, but while it sounds like it would be terrible, it's actually an extremely fun world. We activate the warp pad first. And hey, look! It's the Turbo Trainers from the first Banjo-Kazooie. Those are back. And in this crate, a new type of boot. These are the Springy Step Shoes, but you'll have to come and find me before you can use them. So the Springy Step Shoes are not a move we're going to learn for a couple of worlds. And if we go into first person mode right here, we can see there's a Cheeto page right on top of the entrance to uh, sign for Glitter Gulch Mine. I think what the game wants you to do is to actually learn the Springy Step Shoes in a future world, come back here and use them to bounce all the way up there. But you don't need to do that. Because the entrance to the world is this rope, and you have to climb all the way up to get out, you can literally just climb up high enough, jump, and do a flutter to get onto the sign as well, and we can get the Geo page that way. I don't know if this was intended or not, but I definitely prefer a minor, a mild sequence break to backtracking. 
Five pages at last. Come and see me in Grunty's old lair in Spiral Mountain, and I'll tell you your first secret cheat. Well, as fun as cheating is, I'm not gonna leave the world this uh, this quickly. The cheat's not even gonna help us that much in this world, so. Yeehaw! These cowboy enemies will come out of the ground and attack us, but they're easy enough. I love the gemstone piles in this world, and hey, it's a globo! And there's a globo here because Wumpa's wigwam is right here in the center of the level. Let's go inside. We're not gonna give it to her just yet because I don't want to transform. But we're gonna go in here because there's actually a warp pad just inside her wigwam this time, not just outside. Alright. So this world is quite a bit bigger and a little bit more confusing than Mayahem Temple was. There's a lot of different tunnels you can go through, and there's a giant minecart track that's going throughout the entire level. So there's a lot to explore here. We'll be here for a good while. Yeah! The music in this world is so catchy, though. I mean, the music in every world in this game is so catchy. Grant Kirkhope, you're a genius. There's a busted up minecart here that we can't use. Can just get rid of these guys. Let's go into the fuel storage. Thankfully, these caverns will generally have labels outside of them telling you where you're about to enter. So that can help with navigating the level. This is a new enemy here. That is a TNT uh, canister, and if we get near it, it'll fire uh, dynamite sticks at us. However, we have fire eggs. A couple of fire eggs will destroy it. I think you can also use regular eggs. But that requires using more of them. Alright, we got some notes, and hey, who's this? Bleep! I'm trapped in this mine by that blocked tunnel! Bleep! That is a terrible voice, but I don't know how to sound robotic like that. Bleep! I'm trapped in this tunnel! <laughs> that sounds like one of the crows from Redwall. <laughs> Alright, well, there's a there's a barrel of TNT in the way. If we shoot a fire egg at it, nothing happens. We actually can't detonate that right now. But we will collect the uh, stack of notes on our way out. Yeah, we can't do anything in the fuel storage just yet. But remember it. Yeah! Oh, man. This game is a little bit laggy at times, if you couldn't tell. Anyway, there's a, our first priority for this level is we're going to find the first jam jars. Uh, the first jam jars silo, so that way we can learn a new move. Let's just follow the uh, rail cart tracks for now, shall we? I know we're missing a lot of stuff, but this will just kind of take us through the level and we can hit warp pads on our way. So this is the crushing shed. This will play an important role later on, and it's a mumble pad. Also will play an important role later on. Another TNT barrel next to a bunch of rocks that we can't detonate. Noticing a trend yet? Alright, here's where we want to go. There's a bunch of notes over here. And a giant barrel here. At the top of these rocks is a little house, or a hut, which is kind of weird to see underground. But let's take a peek inside. Oh hey! It's the Prospector's Hut. This is where we- this is what we saw in, um, the Jiggy Wiggy challenge. Sup, bro? Howdy! Well, who might you be? I'm Bill! I'll bet your other name is gold-related. What is it? Bull, gold Bar Bill? Klondike Bill? Nope, Bullion Bill's my name. Thought so. What's up, Bill? My rodent partner, Duberta, went looking for gold, but she's been gone far too long. We'll keep a lookout for her. Not so fast, Banjo. Make sure he makes it worth our while. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, can we have a prize if we find her? You city folk are all alike. 
I wonder where she could be. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, well, if you help us out. Yeek! I'm sure I came in through a tunnel. Remember her back in the Mayahem Temple? Yeah, she is Dilber. She's Dilberta. And she's Boy and Bill's partner, apparently. And if we go for this little door here. It actually takes us back to the Mayahem Temple prison compound. However, we're immediately blocked by something, so we can't actually go any farther. <laughs>